What's up, YouTube? I'm doing part two of that Daniel Hostclaw OKC police officer guy. So after his verdict, that was over him sentencing, whatever, blah, blah. So now I'm going to the aftermath. This is what I learned. The DNA that they found in the pants portion was basically, they said those were skin cells that was transferred from one person to another person. And then he touched that down there and it was a transfer second contact. A 17 year old girl. That was his youngest victim. And then the female was like, oh, it was a fine police officer. And he approached me on, top, on the front porch, front yard, next to the door, whatever. He he had sex with me on the couch. But there's no... And the prosecution lied. was like, oh, that DNA is vaginal, a vaginal discharge. There was no vaginal nothing found. That was a lie. It was skin cells of hers. He probably digged through her purse. Which she admit to him digging through her purse. Well, I mean, it is her purse. She do dig through and look through it too. That's skin cells right there. You basing your case off of skin cells? I could touch you, you two viewers, and touch my pants and have your skin cells on my pants. So I raped you? Stop it. I go. He wasn't found guilty of rape of her and there was one female that cost him five criminal charges he was convicted for three of them and she gave the wrong description of what the officer looked like he said oh he's a short black male and what Daniel Hosclaw's not black he ain't short either her description and then the story of where it was located that was inaccurate too. And they took her in consideration. And he was found guilty of three charges out of the five that they filed based on her. I ain't trying to stick up for dude, but those charges should never have been seeked upon. And he never should have been found guilty of any of them five charges that she put on him. You have the wrong description. Show me this black short officer you see in court. Well, I don't see him. He's at the defense table. I don't see nobody black over there. Your description is off. Then another female described him as a Mexican. 5'10", 5'11"-ish. And slender built. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he got found guilty off of Victims that can't give a right description? And he got hit with 261 years off the wrong descriptions of him? Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! I went, what? And then they allowed a female who was high on PCP that day. High on PCP and testified in court. And they took her testimony in consideration. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, you, you kidding, right? They tested her blood the same day. She was slurring her words, and there, like something wrong with her. Go test her. She got PCP in her blood. Really? That's three unreliable witnesses that I learned. In the aftermath, me researching this. Initially, I thought dude's sick freak. Whatever. I still kind of, I still think he's still glad because why are these three, these what, 13, 12 different women? They don't know each other, but they basically got similar stories. So something's up. Then a 57 year old said he performed oral sex on an officer. Now she gave out a good description of him. She was the key witness. But even then, he shouldn't even got hit with all them damn charges. Like, dude, they swabbed him. There is no saliva. There's no vaginal fluids. No vaginal discharge. No nothing on him. And his penis area to say that he had sex with any of them. 
They couldn't find no DNA link at all. They just took their words for it and took their story into consideration finding him guilty. I was like, what? You still think the criminal justice is fair? Think it's the rape? There's no DNA evidence to suggest rape. There's no DNA evidence to suggest oral copulation. And the 57-year-old girl said that she performed oral on dude. They swallowed her mouth and his penis. There's no saliva or nothing that indicates you perform oral sex. There go a contradiction there too. So someone asked me, okay, based on everything you know, the ins and out, what do you think? What do I think? He probably gonna get a new trial or they gonna over they gonna overturn everything. Whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen in his favor. I'm not saying he's gonna be a free man, but the the odds of that are in his favor because of all these facts that are put out there. It's like he gonna it's gonna get to US Supreme Court at some point because these lower courts probably gonna deny him, deny him, deny him, uphold the convictions. It's gonna eventually get to the Oklahoma State courts. And it's gonna go to US Supreme Court. Once it gets there, they look at everything, they're gonna be like, hmm, throw everything out. This is crazy. And he's probably gonna get a new trial, or he's gonna be walking away free, or they're gonna reduce it all the way down to Maybe a handful of years. I don't know. But wherever the case is going to happen, it's going to happen in his favor. You don't have to believe me. You can be against me. That's fine. But based upon what I know and what I learned and discovered, it was a bunch of unreliable witnesses. One girl was like, I was cuffed to the bed. And he said to me that, oh, I will smash the mess out of you right now. But I'm on the clock, so I can't do nothing. But here, suck on this. And she describes dude as a Mexican. I'm going, mm. You swear you saw an officer in your face and you can't give a description of what this man looked like. That is outrageous. Now, I'm not saying he didn't do it. I'm just saying based upon evidence, facts, statements that was provided, that was shown out there. He's finna get his case overturned. I strongly believe that. You can disagree, agree, comment down below, do what you do. Like, comment, share, subscribe to this video. Tell me what you think about that Daniel Host Oklahoma police case.